Like many Italian stories, this one begins in a small village against a background of simple things and ordinary people. Monticatini is the village, a quiet spot in the Val di Cecina. It is in the Pisa province. Should you ever happen to be there, well, go up to the village from which Monticatini derives its name and be sure that someone will take you to see the original source of the firm's prosperity. In other towns and villages, they will show you Rossini's spinet, the basin Garibaldi used, the bed in which Napoleon slept, the house of some illustrious person. Here, in the village of Monticatini, everything is old, so old you would think you were in a museum. to the lives of its workers, to their sacrifices and courage. Busts adorn the old entrance to the mine, turning it into a sort of pantheon. And in the houses, the walls are hung with holy pictures, as is customary among poor villagers. Clark, writing in copper plate, has drawn up the balance sheet of those first efforts, the debits and credits that tell the story of every enterprise. What we see here is a tiny corner of a small but proud country, Italy at the end of last century. A century that had its charm, its aspirations and its melodrama. And now a new one is opening, full of promise. The old horse trams, the officers' carriages, the chanteurs and the Madame Bovary's are disappearing. The age of railways is here. Goodbye to the blue glow of the gas lamp where lovers met and tipsy revelers declaimed. Electricity will soon illumine the beauties of the skull. The great days of Verdi. The master composer has just finished his latest opera, Fausta. King Umberto has been killed by the anarchist Bresci. Vittorio Emanuele III comes to the throne. There are difficult years ahead. The socialists are preaching a new doctrine. The evolution of society. The ambition to become middle class. Meanwhile, new uniforms have been designed for the soldiers. There's the gramophone. The telephone. And now there's something for the children to laugh over. Comic magazine. This time it's good news for the miners. While searching for copper, Monticatini's prospectors have made an unexpected discovery. Iron pyrites. And to his progress report, the old clerk adds a new name, always in copper plate handwriting. The name of Guido Donigani, a young engineer from Leghorn an enterprising young man who has solved the water supply problem in his native town. A man who realizes the possibilities of this latest find, iron pyrites. By studying the geology of the region, Donigani is soon able to locate new seeds. Monticatini moves from Leghorn to Milan, and in less than two years, Dr. Donegani becomes managing director of the firm. Under his direction, mineral ore production soars from 43,000 to 200,000 tons a year. The company's capital increases to 15 million lire, a huge sum at that time. The transformation of these raw materials begins. Fossils? No. The first consignment of copper sulfate has arrived. machines to help the men in the mine. But the sulphur cakes are still turned out by hand. The young company's plan is to expand its production of copper, sulphur and iron pyrites. It is a period of order and security. 
everyone says that the Libyan war is only an episode. Yet in fact, it is a rehearsal for a greater one to come. But there are still four years of peace. And during those years, Montecatini enters into participation with a new company formed to manufacture superphosphates from the products of its own mines. At the end of 1913, the firm enters the field of industrial chemistry. Then, in May 1915, Italy declares war. The poet D'Annunzio mocks the enemy in fiery words. Pamphlets over Vienna, a bomb on Milan. It is a long fight before General Diaz signs the final war bulletin announcing victory. Montecatini made its contribution to the 1914-1918 war effort, and the firm's trademark has now become a familiar one. It is to be seen even on bags of nitrogen fertilizer. This product is the result of a revolutionary technique introduced by Dr. Fauser. Writes in his patented process, are bought throughout the world, and Italy is able to cancel this item from her export bill. Once again, dynamite is being used for peaceful purposes. This factory is something like a giant kitchen, with the women all as busy as housewives, but the slender strands they are handling will help to split mountains. Montecatini increases its capital and can now plan new schemes, create new jobs. King Vittorio Emanuele visits the latest plant at Sinico. Donegane and Fausa are there to welcome him. In Italy, says Donegane, we are not yet aware of the value of nitrogen fertilizers. We must bring these products to the farms. We must re-equip the agricultural worker and give him more self-assurance. transported by beasts of burden, no longer mined in dangerous conditions. It is now extracted with pneumatic drills, loaded on conveyor belts, and hoisted by means of power lifts. of the farmers. They foster a closer understanding between man and the soil. Mussolini's raincoat to strike a note of discord. The battle will be won. It will be won by fertilizers, not slogans. What will the future bring us? Well, we all have our dreams. The office clerk dreams of a little car, the director's secretary of a silver fox fur. The family looks forward to a seaside holiday midday at Montecatini's, and behind his window, Dr. Donigani works on.
Fiaticatini now extends its activities into Italy's undeveloped southern region. In the Puglia province, the firm is mining bauxite from which to make aluminium. Zinc and lead also figure in its output. New quarries are opened up in the Apuan hills behind Carrara. In the autumn of 1935, another war breaks out, the prelude to a long winter which will last until 1945. The Italians are seeking an empire in Abyssinia. In two years' time, they will be fighting in Spain to defend civilization, or so they are told. Classical music in the factories, solemn strains in the lull before the storm. War again, the fifth war in 30 years. Italians did and the wrongs they suffered. Republican Italy's first government under the new constitution. It is like starting again at the beginning. All kinds of problems arise. Technical ones in industry, problems of human relations. New names come to the fore, Costa, Valletta, and Faina, emerge in the picture of their country's revival. Donigani's splendid work is taken up by Carlo Faina and Piero Giustiniani. Ruined factories are rebuilt, new opportunities are sought, new ways to welfare. By Montecatini's efforts, hundreds of new schemes are launched in Italy and other parts of Europe. 150 production units give work to 75,000 people. The firm's activities now cover all sectors from metallurgy to industrial chemistry, from explosives to plastics, from artificial textile fibers to paints and varnishes, from medicines to mechanical equipment. Montecatini Group 
is making more electricity for its own consumption than any other firm in Europe. 15 power stations and 1,250 miles of main cables provide its factories and offices with electric current. At Settimo Torinese, the Farm Italia company manufactures proprietary drugs for human and animal consumption, supplying every kind of chemical to the pharmaceutical industry. Laboratories where new formulas are evolved to relieve pain and to prolong life. In this sector, the firm is in the forefront of research. Prestige is achieved by devotion to exacting technique, high business standards, and to the interests of the staff. In the Milan factories, where the most advanced forms of automation are adopted, strict technical and scientific controls guarantee the consistent quality of the medical products. Thus do chemical formulas become medicines and medicines recognized brands. The world of science is a cold one and painful experiments are often necessary. The service that these little guinea pigs render us should not be forgotten. They fall sick, they are treated, and if possible, are cured for our benefit. One of Montecatini's most impressive new factories is at Ferrara. Its shapes and profiles seem to come straight from a modern art book, fantasies with a functional and technical purpose. and synthesize strange molecular combinations. They show us how to turn petroleum oil into textiles, fertilizers and even plates. made from material that came from deposits laid down in the age of mammoths. By changing the molecular formation of crude oil products, a new substance has been created, invented by Professor Nasser. It is called polypropylene, a product which in recent years has become famous throughout the chemical industry. used in making textiles. Meraclon is the lightest and most resistant fiber that has ever been produced. Visitors from far off countries come to inspect production methods. Among them are some Japanese here to study Montecatini's techniques and methods. Polypropylene products is Moplen. The heat resistance of Moplen is exceptional. In the field of plastics, Montecatini's production range is unsurpassed. Industries of the future will need trained men. 
and the youngsters of Brindisi in southern Italy are working for the future. Before long, they will be running this immense plant, which is four times the size of their own town. It employs 4,000 people and is transforming the life and conditions of an entire population. Yes, we need to improve our standards of living and culture. We need to do better. In sport, in literature, in the theatre, in the arts, and in the cinema. As its activities spread through Italy, the firm is serving this common aim. 1961, the centenary year of Italian unity, and Montecatini can point to new factories that it has built throughout the country, from Volcano in the north to Porto Empedocle in the extreme south of Sicily. Developments that are changing the mentality and social structure of the people, especially in the south. Men who once toiled and sweated now tend machines. Cable cars carry loads that were once borne on the backs of men and animals. Potassium salt deposits found by Montecatini at San Cataldo in Sicily are being transformed into fertilizers at nearby Campo Franco. Work for southern Italians were before there was none. Many years have gone by since the men of Val di Cecina last went down the mines in search of copper. Their lamps are now nothing more than museum pieces. Today our search is for the secrets of matter. It is the atom that will give its name to this present era. And Montecatini is playing its part in shaping this era. A nuclear research center has been set up at Salugia, and there the application of radioisotopes to industry is being studied. This Italian story is now 75 years old. It is an appropriate age to sum up what has passed. Having done so, we turn to the wider horizons of space. We do not do so with any feeling of disillusionment towards Mother Earth, who has contributed so much to this story, but with renewed hopes and aspirations.